Hello, Akron fans! Welcome back. This is Shadow Freak 3 with another exhibition match. This is going to be Catalyte versus Cybernetic Pony on. Oh, all the way around, but doesn't really matter. Thurman Pony versus Catalyte on Withering Dunes, which I don't recall the last time I casted this map. This is not a map that's been played much recently, but I am very interested to see how it plays out in the new metagame because it was not built for it. It was built. Back, I'll just get a match started and show you guys. So anyway, sorry, any point east side of the map. Yeah, this is a map that map that was built back when five and three was. This is before the Cold Forge style. Five LC crates, three QP crates. Mind you, they are against a wall, so it is harder to get in any any RPs. You can get about eight on this line of LC and about six on this line of QP if you place them cleverly. Seven and five, respectively, if you don't. Actually, you can play some really stupidly and lose one on each, but likely the it's going to be 7 and 5. Anyway, Cyberman Pony, east side of the map, going for CISO. Catalyte on the west side of the map is going to be playing Vekir. This map is particularly hilly, as you can see. Also quite small, as can be also seen. Most of the resources in the main base. There's a small expansion in the corners. It's just small bits of crates here and there. Actually, in terms of everything but the main base, it is kind of Cold Forge style. But the main base is basically kind of low rate of harvesting, but decent amount of resources to harvest. So you can hold it for a long time. While the expansions, on the other hand, are a bit easier to harvest more quickly, although even then not by much. But they aren't going to last as long. Not a map that really encourages massive expansion, but at the same time it's also 200 by 200. This is a pretty small map. So, Cybernetic Pony going very quickly for an armory. Playing the size of the map very wisely, while Catalyte, not likely to change his play too much. But might change when he builds up a depot. He is attacking... No, he's not He's not attacking, he's just scouting. Using his Zion Veer to set up his RPs, and apparently the RPs were automatically going in the very non-clever way. Although it looks like Catalyte is fixing that, making sure they are not being stupid. And he will have another space. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky like that. Scout comes in, Catalyte aware of Cybernetic Pony's species, and Cybernetic Pony will... Well, he's aware of what Catalyte's playing now, and he is also aware of the main base not being used for much besides economic expansion yet. Although it's kind of clever, because right now, Cybernetic Pony, he probably assumes that Catalyte is going for pure LC, but he does not see three of the RPs right now. He doesn't actually know for sure what Catalyte has. Because one of them has been shifted back, although it looks like... No, never mind, Catalyte is setting up an extra one. So in the next iteration, Cybernetic Pony will in fact see this particular RP. And likely some echoes out here, but honestly, on a map this small, it's rather difficult to predict actions. Factor coming up for Cyber Pony. It's just, it's easy for the game state to switch rapidly. And Catalyte actually, from his point of view, has lost his annex. He's got to be a bit more careful here. Will likely echo back his scouting forces to defend. And we'll see. He is jumping back to when his scouting forces went out. Are they going to be echoed back? And yes, they are. So Catalyte, Keeping everything back for defense. Right next to the Impelible Pass to edge for him, too. Well, basically based on the Chrono G. Not really an Impelible Pass, it's more of a relative Unplayable Pass. The actual Unplayable Pass is still past the Immutable Pass right now. So Cybernetic Pony is... Or never mind, coming through. Cybernetic Pony, as far as he's concerned, has beaten Catalyte. Catalyte, not quite that dead, but Cybernetic Pony is continuing to build a factory, getting more RPs. First on Q Plasma as well, so a 6th RP is on Q Plasma, while Catalyte was focused very heavily on Liquid Crystal. In fact, he had 7 RPs in Liquid Crystal. Trying to get quick expansion cash is not the best idea on a map this size. Like, Liquid Crystal is great for building up infrastructure. For building up advanced units, you want Q Plasma pretty evenly, if not like half as much as Liquid Crystal. Like, evenly at most, but yeah, even 5 and 1, not a bad idea on a map like this. Cybernetic Pony does demonstrate this. He does actually ha get, well, 5 and 3 pretty quickly by the 4-minute mark. And a few ATHCs coming out as well. None have been built so far, and Cybernetic Pony going for the quick center southwest expansion, the near south, sorry, southeast. The near southeast expansion, not the far one. And Catalyte, back at his base, is... Actually, oh. I think... I apologize if it has been. Okay. If the audio was messing up there, I'm sorry. I forgot to reinitialize it in OBS. So anyway, back to this game. We 
do see that Catalyte is defending pretty well. Although he did lose the Zion Veer. Actually, he might lose everything. The Marine will likely die. Okay, the Marine died just in time. The Shin Veer, not quite dead yet, but still, this is kind of tricky. The Shin, Shin Veer basically has range as its only advantage right now, and never mind, Catalyte able to micromanage his forces a bit better and fend off separate opponents' attack while keeping his Zion Veer alive and thus not getting his economy undermined. But yeah, Liquid Crystal is great for getting a lot of RPs and a lot of infrastructure in general, but not great for getting a lot of units. Not alone, anyway. Nothing more advanced than like, beer class units for Vekir. The Cybernetic Pony has won! In the future. In the past, however, Catalyte is still alive and is getting Cube Plasma. No depot yet, though. He is likely to build that up pretty soon. There's a foundation. The depot will likely be coming in soon after. And it looks like Catalyte actually turned some of his Cube Plasma... Yeah, he turned his starting Cube Plasma into 20 Liquid Crystal. Just to get one of his RPs faster. So right now, Catalyte at 338 mark is running 7 and 3 against Cybernetic Pony running 5 and 1. Although Cybernetic Pony has actually 5, 1, and 3, because Cybernetic Pony has 3 importers. Two foundations coming up for Catalyte. He will likely be building up a depot once he gets the money for it. Which is now, and there it goes. There's the depot. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, is not yet expanding over here to the center southeast expansion. He's also set up in the Northeast Expansion. It looks like he's half setting up and half checking. He is building a factory here just to consolidate a bit. Hasn't built any RPs, though. Getting machinery on his own, so he will be able to get Tornadons and tanks. Not at all surprising going against Vekir, because it's likely Zion Pulse will come in, but it looks like Catalyte's actually switched directly into air units, or at least aerial control center. Not getting air units yet. Getting Teth and Zion Pulsers, which is a good choice. I mean, Zion Pulsers invite air counters, and Teth Pulsers counter that. A little bit risky though, because your opponent might just go pure ground and decide just to tank the Zion Pulsar damage, in which case the Teth Pulsars are not doing much except tanking damage themselves. However, that is not the case. 780 Pony is in fact going Aries, getting at well, same lands you got before. He's likely to get Tornads pretty soon. He has machinery up. He, or no, he's getting machinery. He was getting machinery. Apparently, he has undone that. And there it goes, getting it once again. And. That comes alongside a factory being built at the center southeast, southeast expansion while Catalyte getting his depot up. And there we go, Shin Pulsar, which... Hey, Shin Pulsar! You never, we never see Shin Pulsars! That is not a unit that comes up very much. But hey, there it is. And, well, sort of. It, quit dancing. You're, you're messing with the camera. You're messing with the autofocus. There it goes. Okay, yeah. Shin Pulsar. Getting ship teleport. The unit we do not see anywhere near enough of. Well, at least I think we don't. I mean, it, it's not surprising since it's not a unit that really has an obvious purpose. It's one of those units that is kind of overvalued. It's, it's outvalued by the Jin Turcher for ground and Teth Turcher for air. I mean, it's cheap, yes, but for air with the investment you need, most players will just go for Shin and Teth Turcher. But hey, Shin Pulsar, at least it's a thing. Also, this TSS breaking, which against CISO will mean something maybe in 10 minutes. Maybe. I don't... I think the last time I saw TSS was a year or so ago. On All of Stone Pass. That was just a weird game. Yeah, TSS is hardly used, so I don't imagine it'll come out much. And Lancers are coming around, just scouting out. 720 has three of them. They aren't going to do too much. The Shin Pulsar should be able to take care of at least one or two of them. And... Catalyte, what does he have on top of this? He has, well, nothing really. He's getting no more, no further units. Getting Comhub, not expanding either. I think he's going to expand over this center northwest expansion. He does appear to have set himself up for that. But Lancer's coming in at the 705 mark. They will be able to get rid of the Teth Veer. And they are getting harassed by auto defense, but Catalyte is not built. What is Catalyte doing? He's not building any further units. Why is he not building further units? This is very bizarre. Now, Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, has expanded over to the Center Southeast expansion. He has Tornauts coming in. He has quite a bit of infantry coming in. Tanks as well, which will be loaded with infantry very shortly. Just across the map, and his Lancers are coming in fairly powerfully, but it looks like the forces of Catalyte are moving in to defend, while Lancers just combing the area, making absolutely sure that Catalyte has not expanded, and he has not. Catalyte is being very insular, focusing entirely on his main base, and has pretty much exhausted what he can. Only... Things. Three more Q plasma spots if he's clever about it, and he's already blocked off one of them with a comm hub. It's going to be tricky for him to get out of this and actually expand. 
Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, is ahead in that regard. And I think Catalan, he might be trying to get Gate Tech. That's the only thing that comes to mind, but he doesn't have enough Cube Plasma to really make that work at this point. I'm not sure what his intent is right now. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, I am absolutely sure what his intent is. Is he is getting a fairly well rounded force, expanding out, taking what map control he can. Usually take out this. He could build a few RPs here too if he wanted to. And using that combined arm strategy just to run through whatever it is the Catalyte builds. Of course, the weakness will be against teleportation, but frankly, Catalyte isn't enough units to make that that scary. Also, this map is fairly small, so the teleportation effect is mitigated by the fact that units can just move. They can pretty much move across the map quickly enough, it won't matter too much. And Cybernetic Pony's air units are having a dance party as the pilots vomit uncontrollably due to the com targeting or the piloting computer having absolutely no respect for human well-being. And Cadlight at least is getting def he's getting very defensive. This is not terribly surprising for Vecchier. Actually, it's a bit surprising to be honest that Vecchier has not been a more defensively played species in general. But honestly, this isn't how you play Vecchier. On this map, it might be a bit different, but most of the time, you don't build as many Bastions for Vekir. It's very uncommon. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, he is playing Ciso, which is more of an aggressive race, or aggressive species. However, surprisingly enough, he is not attacking it. He is continuing to build up an army, getting some mechs as well, so likely to get macrofabs within the next minute or so. And now he's moving out once again, coming around the map, just to see what exactly is going on. And we have the tanks being loaded up with infantry. Three of them getting loaded up, and it looks like... The one in the expansion has not been loaded up in the inventory yet. None coming in, and a Marine over to the southeast. Take that. Cybernetic Pony notices that Catalyte has done nothing really unusual. No meaningful changes. Catalyte, however, has built some more units. He has gotten a Shin Torture and Tet Torture. Still not building a lot of units. I think he is trying to spend his Liquid Crystal in anticipation of getting Gate Tech. And he has also set up a fifth QPRP. But he needs to expand at this point. He needs more Cube Plasma if he wants to go for Gate Tech. He is building more units, and that is good. That's what he needs to do with the money he has. Now, Cybernetic Pony finally meets up with the Expansion Force. Gets rid of one of the Expansion Force. Gets rid of the Zion Veer way too quickly. Gets rid of the RP, and that combing is paying off. We are going to get a bit of a re-micro war right now as Cybernetic Pony... Okay, so Catalyte has met up in this iteration. Cybernetic Pony gets rid of this Shin, Tur Shin Pulsar quite quickly. Not the Shin Turchers, though. The Shin Turchers are still going to be a threat. But the Shin Pulsar, not some... Actually, no, never mind. Shin Turchers is not going to be a threat. However, the tanks are going to move forward, or they should move forward, because they are definitely powerful anti-air. And they bring, of course, within the infantry, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. In fact, Cybernetic Pony is going to the main base instead, trying to avoid the expansion, because, well... Why bother with the expansion when that's, all, that's where all the units are? Realizing, however, that, Cyber that Catalyte has a lot of Bastions in play, Cybernetic Pony goes home. Might be prepping for an edge attack, though. Looks like he is setting up his units, regrouping them with his tanks. We should see an edge attack pretty soon. Now, back to Catalyte's point of view at the 11:20 mark. He has, as far as he's concerned, taken the center northwest expansion. A little bit later than Cybernetic Pony's took his, quite a bit later, actually, and Cybernetic Pony has a macro on top of that. Cleverly blocking this cliff off, too. Not that's going to matter when you're dealing with, a, with an entire army that can teleport, but still, it's, it's a thing, I suppose. It does force teleportation along that path. And here come the tanks, but why are the Trinons not with them? I don't know. A second macro being built, though not a whole lot of production is coming out of Cybernetic Pony at this point. And here come the infantry, dealing quite a bit of damage, getting rid of some of the Shin Torchers. So the only dedicated anti-ground force right now is the Zion Pulsar, and that even then is not doing a whole lot of damage. The tanks are able to come through here. And Cybernetic Pony looks like he is going to have a really easy time dealing with this. Losing a lot of infantry in the process, though. Losing all of the Marines that he sent in. The tanks are doing fine, but the Marines are not. In their last moments, envious of the tanks that brought them in here and their drivers. Because the tanks and their drivers are not dead. Now, Catalyte, we'll see what he does to respond to this. He doesn't have a whole lot of cash. He does have Gay Tech, however. He is researching that, which is what he's been waiting for this entire time. Which should be of some use, but even then, his forces are taking quite a lot of damage. Tanks tanks do quite well against air. Getting rid of the anti-air first, though, was a bit of a mistake, and a lot of the tanks are dying as a result, but still, the Shinters are going to go down. That is the important target. If that goes down, then Cybernetic Pony has an easy road through here. However, 
Next iteration, Cybermane Pony comes in with a bunch of Lancers, at least distracting Catalyte's forces. Not really doing too much beyond that, though, I'm afraid. But still, that does help out a bit. Distract some of the forces, and does mean that the Shin Turchers... Well, there's only ten, one Teth Turcher to distract the tanks rather than two. So the Shin Turchers are going to go down very quickly. Still, two tanks do go down. That Bastion made quite the difference. Tornad not coming in, though. It's a bit too focused on... It, it seems to have crashed. Smacked into the cliff and gotten its little... Its little bayonet front stuck in there. However, the remaining two Tornads coming in and getting rid of the Zion Pulses without issue. Shin Turch is still being a problem, however, but everything else is working out just fine. The expansion going down. Some losses for Cybernetic Pony, but Catalyte has lost this entire expansion as main base. Catalyte building up more Shin and Teth Turchers, and we will see no further Shin Pulsers because at this point there's not much point. There rarely ever is. But it looks like... Oh, what? No! Okay, I was apparent... No, okay, Catalyte hasn't seen that he's lost the base. He thought he hadn't, but... Ultimately, he has in fact lost the base. He finds this out. What will he do? Will he send in reinforcements? He might. He has gate tech. He can teleport them in. We'll see if he does that. The Bastion does go down, and this is right near the unplayable fast edge, so there's not much that can be done to save it. Catalyte could teleport his units in, has not yet chosen to do so. In fact, he's just he's flying them in. And the Tether Turcher will go down, the Shin Turcher probably won't. And with that, we will have the end of this assault. The expansion ultimately saved, but a bit of a Pyrrhic victory for Catalyte, I'm afraid. That being said, Cybernetic Pony does not have gate tech. He does have weaponry. He does have heavy cruisers. He hasn't loaded up the heavy cruiser with a nuke. He might have just gotten it for the Tornad damage boost. But he also has no further Tornads coming in. MFB on top of the heavy cruiser. No nukes, though, but still, this... This attack, ultimately, like I said, a failure for Cybernetic Pony. Well, okay, like I said, a pure victory for Catalyte. He lost the foundations, he lost the potential slipgate. He has a few damaged resource processors, and that's about it. He has a slipgate, however, in his main base being built up, which we will likely see Chrono Shenanigans in about 10 seconds from the looks of it. There is only one Ted Turcher, though. Well, okay, there's the Shin Turcher and Ted Turcher over here in the north, but they aren't in the main base. Not a lot of units are being built to support this slipgate. Well, okay, there's another Teth Turcher and another Shin Turcher. Which actually, altogether, would probably save this. I mean, it was a close enough run thing. But I think Catalyte will be able to save this with a clever Chronoport. Should that happen, then Cybernetic Pony's going to be in a bit of trouble. But that being said, Cybernetic Pony has most of the map. The entire east side of the map belongs to Cybernetic Pony and is getting a lot of money off that. He has Gate Tech of his own. No Chronoport or Teleporters quite yet, but we'll likely see one in his main and one in his natural if he's still playing that way. Originally he did, but I haven't seen him actually get Gate Tech in a while. Actually, well, actually I have, and he hasn't really done that so much, so he might not ultimately do that particular play. Mar tanks are overcoming to support the regular tanks. No gr twin Mars quite yet, and no ground units either, so this is pure Mar tank with quite a few MFBs. Cybernetic Pony is just building one of everything in the CISO armed forces. Now, where. See, Catalyte. He has a slipgate, it is on repel mode, and there have been no chronoports. What? Seriously? He's not going to try to save that bastion. He's not going to try to save the expansion here by chronoporting back these units. I mean, it's too late now. It really is just too late now. He can't actually send them back in time. There's, He'd have to send them back from about here, and the slipgate, I don't think it was up in then. Or at least he wouldn't be able to set up an uppercut at that point. He'd need to have four ores with the chrono energy, and at that point he actually has five. Never mind, he could do that. It'd be a close run thing, but no, he wouldn't save it. Never mind. He's not going to bother either. He could have, it would have been close, but he could have done it. However, that's not happening. Saturday Pony back at the 17 minute mark. Getting up more infantry, going for the same sort of tank inventory setup he had before. And that heavy cruiser surprisingly still not has a nuke. Does not have a nuke yet. I do think he just got the weaponry for Lancers and possibly Tornads. But he's not building enough Lancers or Tornads to justify it, so that to the nuke, and he's not nuking up that cruiser. Or loading up the cruiser with the nuke, so I'm not really sure what's going on there. And it looks like these RPs are scheduled to go over to the Northwest Expansion. That's going to be dangerous. They are probably going to die. This South Expansion actually will be quite safe. In fact, most of the map, apart from that Northwest Expansion, is pretty much safe. 
Catalytamine could move into this expansion of the southwest and maybe to the south, although it's quite close to Cybernetic Ponies. But he couldn't easily move over to the expansion. Oh, actually, that's about it. Yeah, these, this expansion over here is already Catalyzing. He has a second Slipgate now. What it'll be used for is yet to be seen. Catalyze does have Halcyon Glass, getting some Teth Halcyons. Not a great idea, unfortunately. Teth Halcyons were nerfed in the last patch. Well, sort of. Their f damage was increased, but their health was massively decreased. It was reduced to about 75% of what it was before. So they are very much glass cannons. Very, very much glass cannons. Shin Halcyon come up as well, which has been slightly buffed in the last patch. A lot of Halcyon class units coming in. Catalyte just pumping those out. Cybernetic Pony on the other hand, but the 1820 mark can't build units fast enough. Might want to have bit more production structures here. Can't or won't build units fast enough to actually take his resources. He might be worried about undermining. I think he is. That would that would make a lot of sense. Catalyte has a slipgate. Cybernetic Pony is probably aware of this, or at least guesses as much. So, it would make perfect sense to do things the way he is doing them. That being said, he might actually be saving up for a carrier, knowing about slipgate repel, and just going to go into the carrier and tear apart the slipgates. Not even let the repel stop him, just tear it apart. That doesn't seem likely, though. I don't know. And there, okay, there we go. Heavy Cruiser has a nuke. Gotta pay attention to this thing. It has a nuke. And that might come in handy. Nukes are rather unwieldy to use due to the 3.5 second cast time. But it is going to be an interesting thing. Yeah, if somebody pony goes for a carrier, then you'd be able to tear apart the slipgate because carriers don't get repelled by slipgates and then everything else runs in because somebody pony does not like slipgates. However, we are going to see a chronoport. Catalyte going in for one and getting all of his units in position. He does not have the resources to cornerboard everything, though. In fact, he is off by a factor of four. But he's going to try anyway. Actually, okay, three. Factor of three. Or is he? I thought he would, but apparently not. And Cybernetic Pony is moving in on the 1928 mark with a lot of tanks and a twin mar. Tanks, however, are releasing their cargo pretty early in. The Marines going back into the tanks. However, Submarine Pony is going to have to deal with this. The fact that the tanks did lose their cargo pretty quickly. And Catalyte teleporting all of his units to the front lines. That should be able to quite quickly get rid of Submarine Pony's forces. A little bit surprised the heavy tanks were not upgraded to. The tanks could upgrade to heavy tanks. Submarine Pony has enough money to do that with all of his tanks. And that would help, at least with the air units. Also help with increasing health. However, even with that, Catalyte is losing all of his air units because tanks are great against air and Teth Halcyons are not great against ground. And the Heavy Cruiser, not quite setting up a nuke yet. Really, the best position would be in the main base. Probably on top of this hill here. Or probably from the hill. But yeah, in the main base would be the best place for the Heavy Cruiser to go. Not doing that, however. And it... Or, wait, is it? It is! It is! Cybernetic Pony is moving the Heavy Cruiser into the main base. It is, however, getting slip, skip repelled out of there. Which does not bode well for Cybernetic Pony's quick victory plans. He could still win from here, it's just that it's going to take a little longer. He does have a Blackbird, which can cloak and thus avoid Skip Repel. However, the Bastions would destroy it immediately. And other than that, yeah, Carrier really would be the best bet. So unfortunately for Summary Pony, that Skip Repel is holding him back quite a lot. Able to do some damage here and just basically spotting with tanks as they get teleported back for his Twinmar. Twinmar about to tear apart the slipgate, so that will finish this. Catalyte still has not used his slipgates for chronoporting. I do not know why. He is, I mean, okay, he hasn't had a lot of cube plasma, so maybe that's why. That makes a lot of sense, but still, he also expanded a lot early on. It's just, he could have probably made some good use of it. At this point, it's hard to say, though, because a lot of his housing class forces are not in position. That's the one big thing there. These Zion housings would do wonders, but they are not in the right position. Twin Mars was the only threat to them, and even then, they have 600 health apiece. That Twin Mars is going to take at least four shots to kill them. Maybe five. Yeah, Twin Mars are... They're quite scary. Actually, no, it would take more than that. That's 183 damage over five seconds, so... That's... Okay, I'm exaggerating a bit, but it would be... It, they would tank pretty well. Zion Halcyons are tanks. That's what they do. They aren't much stronger than Zion Pulses for cost, but they are much tougher. Now, Saturday Pony waiting with that carrier, or the Heavy Cruiser just out of range of the Skip Teleport, or the Slipgate for the Skip Repel. And doing a pretty decent job still going in here. 
the Zion Alzian is further back. The Bastions are the main threat, but those are going down. One of them has gone down. The rest are going to go down soon after. And surprisingly, the MFB is not moving forward to heal its compatriots. Why is this hanging back here? I do not know. But it is indeed hanging back, and further units are back at the base. Not surprising here because a counterattack is possible. Cadillac could go for a counterattack or a counter uppercut, and these forces would help defend against it. It would buy some time. Saturday Pony could also go for a Chronopore right now. A little surprised if you will, because he seems to be going for conventional attacks, but if he goes for a Chronopore, I think that would seal it. The Chronopore, even just Chronopore is just to double over these forces. That alone would probably seal it. The north side has basically been broken open. The south side is darn near impossible thanks to the Slipgate. The Slipgate were to go down, which Saturday Night Pony seems unlikely to be able to carry in order to do so. But if that were to go down, then the, the Heavy Cruiser could come in and nuke, and no, it just nukes! outside the base and doesn't actually do much of anything. Damages a couple Bastions a little bit. That was a little annoying, but not particularly damaging. Didn't really do all that much. Yep, here's the Heavy Cruiser. There are a couple infantry in play, but that's about it. And that nuke goes off, damages a Bastion, kills a couple infantrymen. Not anything beyond that. So, Saturday Pony just going in pretty much for the kill at this point. Not much can stop him other than a slipgate, which is exactly what is stopping him right now. So the heavy cruiser did go down, which was not surprising. More twin Mars coming in, and that's about it. Yeah, a little surprised that Saturday Pony didn't get specials, just get the whole package deal, and then end up going for temporal assault and shield. Would have actually made the earlier Shin Pulsar investment worthwhile, assuming the Shin Pulsar survived this long. But yeah, would have made that work because TSS units cannot be slipgate; they can't be skip propelled. That's another option besides a carrier, of course. Forgot to mention that, but that is another option. I shouldn't say of course, but it is just due to the fact that TSS units cannot be teleported or chronoported. However, Cybernetic Pony has torn apart Catalyte's base. Catalyte, is he going to chronoport back to try to save this? No, apparently not. Apparently he is accepting his defeat as inevitable. Although admittedly he hasn't got enough Q-Plasma to really chronoport anything anyway. However, he is not quite... Okay, he's just building a bunch of comm hubs. Yeah, he's, he's BMing again. Not much to say here. Main base, just going to go down. But yeah, I'm a bit surprised that TSS was not on Cybernetic Pony's list of options. He didn't build specials, didn't get TSS. Could have TSS that cruiser in there, fired off the nuke right in the center of the base, and quickly ended it that way. But yeah, Cybernetic Pony tearing apart the comm hubs. And that's basically going to do it. So Catalyte has lost the game, and he knows it. And actually, these comm hubs don't really make a difference as far as making the game last longer. Comm hubs don't count. They do not count towards you not being defeated. Because they are not product they do not produce, but even then, Cyberman Pony is torn apart everything, and that is game. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to have one more game for you guys in just a moment. It will be a game between Cybernetic Pony and Wobas. Wobas is a player who has not been shown in a little while. I think have I even cast him before? I'm not entirely sure. He has played before. He's not new. He just is a little bit irregular. Doesn't play a whole lot. See how he plays out. That, how that works out. That'll be on Tomb of Heroes, and it'll be up in just a moment, so stay tuned.